All right, what's going on YouTube? Um, I'm gonna do things a little bit different on this video. Normally it's, yeah, just do whatever. Uh, I like to do funny things, but uh, this one, I wanted to do a how-to video. Um, I noticed on Reddit that a lot of people are struggling in uh, Devil's Roar. So um, I just wanted to give, I guess, a couple of things that I do to help me uh, in Devil's Roar as solo, like on a sloop or as duos, but just in, in general, just on a, on a sloop. One of the biggest things that I've noticed when people go to the Devil's Roar, if I join like a random boat, is that they uh, they have no supplies. Uh, I think that's one of the biggest things that you need when you go to Devil's Roar, because it's, it's just so limited over there. You know, on all the different islands, there's just like hardly any barrels and hardly anything, even on Morrow's Peak on the outpost. So what I like to do first um, is just fill up the boat, just get as much supplies as I can at the outpost. Uh, I typically like to leave, if I'm solo, um, with at least 50 bananas, 50 planks. I think that's pretty reasonable to have, and about 100 cannonballs. Uh, uh, typically in Devil's Roar, you're not going to PvP much, at least not in my my experience. Most people are there. Uh, they're they're just as scared of volcanoes as you are. And they're worried about their loot just as much as you are. So they don't try to, um, you know, get into a battle with you. But yeah, first things first, uh, I guess step one uh, before going into Devil's Roar, I'd say, is grab a shitload of supplies. <laughs> so once you grab all your supplies and you're ready to head into Devil's Roar, um, first thing you want to do is... Oh, the first thing I like to do is I always like to put the Alliance flag up. Just kind of tell everybody that, hey, I'm willing to work with you guys. Uh, don't mess with me. Um, second thing you want to just know your islands. Uh, in Devil's Roar, there's five main big islands. Yeah, just know where to park um, and which islands have cannons on them. Out of the five main islands, there's three that have cannons. You got Ruby's Fall, uh, Devil's Thirst, and Ashen's Reaches. And just kind of know where to go uh, just to avoid cannons. I mean, not only do you have to avoid, you know, the volcanoes, but you don't want that extra damage from cannons. So as you're going to Devil's Roar, uh, know your islands first. Um, I would say, you know, look up maps or whatever, and then also uh, scope out the place. Scope out if you see any galleons or sloops or brigs in the distance, and kind of know where they are, and just kind of map out where what you're going to do first. The key to this game is uh, situational awareness. Uh, if you know where everybody is, you're just going to have, you know, that much more of an advantage. Once you get into Devil's War, uh, make sure you have a plan. In this particular video, I'm doing an Athena's mission, and um, just know that there's only one outpost in Devil's War, uh, Moro's Peak Outpost, and that's in the middle. So uh, what I like to do is I like to start from uh, one side. Uh, if I start from the south, then I just make my way north. As you're going through Devil's Roar, the thing you need the most is patience. Pa <laughs> Devil's Roar just sucks. Uh, <laughs> but patience is the key. If you just get to an island and it starts erupting, uh, just leave. Go to the next closest one that's near you. If that one's erupting, then you can go to the next one or just wait those two out. The eruptions typically last, I think, between four to five minutes. Uh, I think it varies. So yeah, just wait. Just sit there and wait. But once you do get to an island, uh, you're going to want to park. Uh, the islands with cannons, I typically like to park as close as I can, um, but on the southeast side of the islands. That's kind of like in a blind spot for most of the cannons on the island. Most of those cannons are facing uh, west and east, and some will have an angle to the north. You can come into the north on all of them. Um, but you, you just have a much smaller window to get out of the range of these uh, skeletons. Uh, one thing to note in Devil's War is that it is deceivingly shallow near the shores. Uh, a lot of times people just run up, you know, they think they can get fairly close to the shoreline and then all of a sudden, you know, you just start putting holes in the bottom of your boat. So you always have to be aware of that. You need to keep your sails up fairly, you know, high so you can go to slow, slow yourself down. The slower you go, the less damage you're going to take. So yeah, so that's one thing to know. Tip, typical strategy in the normal world is once you park at an island, you don't drop the anchor. Well, if you do drop the anchor, immediately raise it. Uh, raise anchor, raise sails. So that way, if somebody tries to creep up on you, you just have to drop the sails. It takes, you know, one to two seconds for the sails to fully drop, and you're good to go. In Devil's Roar, uh, I do the exact opposite. I keep my anchor down and sails down. The reason being is because of earthquakes. Um, you want to get close to the shore. You want to be able to access your boat quickly. And the only way to do that is to be close to the shore. If you keep your anchor up, these islands will have earthquakes. And during the earthquakes, you your boat will start drifting and get further and further away from the shore. And you don't want that to happen. 
um, especially because earthquakes, they stop you, you know, as you're running. You can't run as fast, and uh, it just sucks. It, it doesn't take long to raise an anchor on a sloop. It takes seven to eight seconds, maybe closer to eight seconds, to raise an anchor on a sloop. And that's plenty of time. Um, once you're on an island and it starts to earthquake, immediately stop whatever you're doing and just run to your boat and sit and wait and just see if it goes off. If it goes off, you raise your anchor. Typically, once it you it starts billowing smoke, it's about 25, 30 seconds before it starts erupting. So that seven and a half to eight seconds it takes for you to raise your anchor, that's nothing. That, I mean, it's plenty of time. As long as you get back to your boat in time. But once you do get back to your boat, you raise anchor. The next thing you want to do is immediately point away from the island to go blow deck until you get out of the volcano, the range of the volcano. Uh, you're not going to die. You're not going to get one shot blow deck. You'll get hurt. Um, so make sure you have a decent amount of health while you're doing this. And then if you do get hit, just patch up and repair. So once you're away from the island, uh, again, you just either wait it out or you go to the next one. These eruptions will last, you know, four and a half, five minutes, maybe five and a half minutes. Uh, so, I mean, they're not that long. But the frequency of eruptions per island is random, so you can have back-to-back -back eruptions, you can have back-to-back-to-back -back -back eruptions, or you can have no eruptions for like 20 minutes. When you're on the islands um, doing like Gold Hoarders or, or the Souls Quest or even uh, the Merchant Quest, uh, just always remember that geysers are your friends. Uh, geysers are annoying. They will, you know, pop you in the air and they will kill you from time to time. But uh, they are your friends. Uh, I find the Devil's Roar to be so much easier to kill skeletons because of the geysers. Um, you just have to kite them into them. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult with the skeletons with guns. Um, you just kind of have to use line of sight to um, kite them to, into the geysers. The other thing you're going to want to do as a solo sloop is you're going to want to sell often. Uh, like I said, there's only one outpost in Devil's Roar, Moro's Peak. Um, whenever you do, you know, one or two islands, get everything that you you know, need from there, just go to Morrow's Peak and sell. Uh, typically, what, if I'm doing Athena's, I would, when I start from the south, I'll finish everything I have in the south, and as soon as I start making my way towards the north, I'll sell at um, Morrow's Peak, and then I'll uh, finish up the quest. So, sell often. Uh, you don't want to get sunk, and you don't want to lose your treasure, because uh, that's why you're here. If you're doing Gold Horror's quest, and um, you run across one of these bad boys, the... Uh, crying chess um that's <laughs> completely up to you what you want to do with them uh in this particular one i'm you know doing my athenas and uh i get this crying chess and i'm just like oh no <laughs> um if you're if you're solo it just be you know it's just it's too much risk um that you're gonna sink your boat with volcanoes um other players uh everything um so it's up to you. Um, if you want to take that risk, uh, if you want to get a crying chest on your boat, uh, you know, go right ahead. Um, in this particular instance, I did not. Um, this, so this is one chest that I suggest as a solo sloop, probably not to get in um, Devil's Roar, but uh, it's totally up to you. Um, but yeah. When you're on the smaller islands, uh, you also have to be aware that they are near uh, volcanoes that are... Um, yeah, they're near volcanoes. <laughs> uh, so you have to be aware that some of the islands can get pelted uh, by the volcanoes that are, will erupt nearby. Some do not, um, so it's, they're fairly safe to be on. But when you're on these islands, you just need to be constantly aware that there can be a volcano near you, uh, but it's not quite as dangerous as being on one of the larger islands. But yeah, so once you um, are pretty much Dunzo. Like if you're doing an Athena's or something and you want to sell, um, if there's no players around, uh, which typically in my experience Devil's Roar has been pretty barren, I think a lot of the players, uh, especially newer players, which this video is geared towards, um, don't come into Devil's Roar just because of the difficulty level. But the rewards, I mean, it's just it's just so much worth it uh, to come here. You, just, you can make so much money and experience. Um, but when if there are no players when you do sell um like at the end like if you're doing athena's and you have the uh, chest of legends make sure nobody's at morrow's peak uh there are people that will booby trap it um <laughs> hitbo uh he made a great video of a booby trap um at morrow's peak where they stole a an athena's chest it was pretty awesome but yeah uh check out hippo he's uh he's a newer channel like mine um 
but he makes awesome videos. Um, but yeah, so when you're ready to sell, if there are boats around, uh, just go to another outpost. Uh, the two nearest outposts are Galleon's Grave and Ancient Spire. If you are doing Athena's, I suggest do not go to Ancient Spire. Go to Galleon's Grave. Uh, the reason being is the tavern at Ancient Spire is up at the top, and it's just the the time it takes to get off the boat, carry the Athenas to the tavern, climb up, and yada yada yada. I mean, there's too much can happen. Um, I've done a booby trap on Ancient Spire. Uh, you can check that out in uh, one of my other videos. But so if there are boats around, I'll just I'll go to Galleon's Grave. Um, and it's, it, I mean, it's you just park the boat and boom, you're right at the tavern and you know you're good if if you do run into um other pirates out there who are out for blood um just know that as a sloop you can outrun everybody just know that it's possible <laughs> uh don't be afraid um it's always good to have a rowboat um using a rowboat to stash your treasure and then ditching your boat as a last you know a last ditch effort thing you want to do um that's always helpful um but sloops can outrun galleons and brigs directly into the wind if you're going directly into the wind set your sails completely straight and just sail into the wind and you will outrun all the other boats uh, i've done it plenty of times um I remember there was one uh, panel where some Galleon crew was talking to the developers of the game. He said that the Galleons, if they do the exact same strategy into the wind, they could catch up to Sloops. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. If it was, I'm sure the devs patched that. That was a couple months ago. Um, but uh, just know you can outrun them. Um, and you just have to head straight into the wind. As soon as the wind changes direction, you change direction. And it may take a while, but, you know, most people will eventually give up. Unless they know you have a chest of legends, then they're going to not give up. Um, if that's the case, you sail to the Red Sea. <laughs> you sacrifice it. Screw those guys. They go suck a dick. So, yeah, this was, uh, I guess, my little guide on uh, some of the tips and tricks that I do in Devil's Roar. Especially on, on Athena's mission. Just note that in Devil's Roar, you're going to spend a lot of time in here uh, doing these. And just any voyage, really. Use Athena's. Uh, if you could do them quickly. I don't do speed runs. I like to get the gold that I have. Uh, it'll take, you know, two and a half, three hours. Uh, if you're not getting messed with, with by other pirates. So just to recap, I think... I guess the most important things that I think people can take from this video is resources. Um, resources are huge. Make sure you're stocked up beforehand. And also, like, parking. Even though, as, as simple as that sounds, the Devil's Roar is all about timing. Uh, you need to be able to get in and out as quickly as possible. Knowing where to park, how to park, is, is just is invaluable. I can't tell you how many times, you know, I've got saved my butt just from, you know, just parking in the right spot. I mean that's I mean as simple as that sounds, but um, but yeah, and then and just situational awareness. Like I said, uh, that is the the main key to this game is just being aware of everything that's going on around you, the boats that are around you, um, maybe you know who's hostile, who's not, but you know never trust anybody uh, in this game. But yeah, those should be the main points to this, and then just know it's gonna take time, um, and you're gonna die a lot. You're just gonna die a lot. It just yeah, just know that um but yeah i kind of want to do more of these how-to videos if my 49 subscribers like these type of videos uh just leave a like or a comment or whatever and i'd like to do more but yeah um thanks for watching uh i appreciate the couple views i get <laughs> you guys are awesome if you ever see me on the seas my gamer tag is actually uniball it's u-n-l-b-a-l-l -L. the uniball is copyright so i can't have the u-n-i-b-a-l uh, it's just a name I've used in like World of Warcraft. Uh, it always strikes a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have really one ball? No, it's a after the pen. So anyways, but yeah, thanks again for watching. And then uh, I guess I'll catch you guys next time.